How you doing? Hey, honey, boy, I'm not Samuel Jackson, okay? I ain't got no snakes on my plane. I usually get the no snakes on a plane ticket when I fly. I was in LA. I'm in LA all the time, and um, I'm poor. I'm coming. And people are running up to me with their kids. You know, tourists are like, ooh, we're gonna meet our favorite actor. And in this range, you can see that I might look like Samuel Jackson, but you can see that I'm not. <laughs> These people come with their kids, oh, we're gonna meet our favorite actor, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna be robbed. <laughs> so I take their money, I need money. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, I wanted to do something a little different since everybody has jokes out here. And um, I just, this is an introduction piece I want to play with. Can I do this? Yeah. Yeah. Introduction to me. I like tits. Now, at this point, a lot of people ask me how long I've been playing. <laughs> and I tell them, 20, 30 seconds now. <laughs> Y'all look like the hip crowd. Happy birthday, dude. Wherever you at. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing that white people can disappear in the dark, too. <laughs> You're not white? <laughs> you just sound it. Okay. Um, <laughs> the hell yeah! The path of the righteous man be set on all sides by the iniquity of the selfish and the tyranny of the evil man. Truly is blessed the man who shepherds his brother through the valley of darkness, because he is truly his brother's keeper and finder of lost children. And I will come down with great vengeance and furious anger. Those people who try to poison and destroy my brother. And you know my name is Eddie when I bring my joke down on you! <laughs> I'd like to say to somebody. <laughs> now, uh, I, I grew up here in Chicago, um, and um, down the street. I mean, real rough. My, my neighborhood was so rough, they moved it. <laughs> really? Because Rennie Green, I grew up there. Um, my mother told me a long time before, I was five years old. And that's how old I am. I had to ride the back of the bus. She told me racism was stupid. And she had me come through this bus downtown. And we were, I mean, there was white people, you know, squeezed in there. And she was pulling me through all these people until we got to this imaginary line. And she, and I popped out. And the whole back of the bus was empty. And I'm sitting there in the back of the bus. And I'm looking at all these people. I said, Mommy, what is this? She says, this is racism. I said, cool. <laughs> I got kind of mad about racism when I was 15. That turned into a bad boy. I stole my first heart when I was 15. <laughs> Fortunately for me, they caught me two blocks away and took it back to the hospital. <laughs> and the transplant was a success. <laughs> now I have a 15-year-old, and he's, um, I have a lot of kids. I got more kids than Long Isles, tell you the truth. <laughs> I can start my own country. <laughs> My youngest is 15, and I'm on the road a lot. And he, he texted me, he voice texted me and told me a few months ago, he says, look, Dad, I don't need no money, I don't need no gym shoes. Do not call me or text me. I said, did my son just break up with me? <laughs> Send that child support back, buddy. <laughs> let's do this, let's do this. <laughs> but the same kid, the same kid made me, I got a black president now, that racism stuff is, almost out the window, and give it up for the president, no matter what. But I had my first Obama moment, that truth moment, when I was in the mall with this 15 year old, he was a toddler. I put him down and said, go on a walk, walk around. And he looked up and he went. I said, no, 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 go on, run around. Soon as I put him down, there was a, a blonde woman with a little cute beetle cut uh, toddler girl on. She put him down. My kid spotted him. He spotted my kid, and they both ran towards each other. And I said, I'm going to check this out, because I'm going to learn something. 
They both got right in front of each other. They touched, they looked back at each parent. Then they did something so amazing to me. They reached out and they embraced each other. I, I, I really felt stuck in my heart at that moment. And I learned from that, so I ran across the mall. <laughs> and I grabbed that child's parent, gave her a big hug, and I got out of county jail three days later. <laughs> the message is, don't grab the women in the mall. <laughs> Obama's from Chicago, and uh, like, like me, I'm from Chicago. I told you I grew up in a neighborhood that they moved. <laughs> Uh, I got shot seven times in Chicago. Damn. In my neighborhood, they call that an urban camping accident. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. I'm sitting at a sidewalk cafe sipping champagne with my girlfriend. <laughs> and my wife drove by. <laughs> she wasn't that good a shot, but she gave the kids guns. <laughs> damn you, duck hunting Tindo, damn you, hell. But look, they talking a lot of stuff about Obama now. And I'm going to tell you, since he's from Chicago, if anybody tries to shoot at him, he'll be the first president to shoot back. <laughs> Veto. <laughs> oh, man. I got one question for you. You're a 50-year-old guy. Where you at? <laughs> this is between me and you. No, it's not. This is a question because I'm going through this period of life, too. I'm in my 50s. I'm going to the doctor a lot. Just, just to check up, but I want to know, is it wrong to fall in love in the middle of a prostate examination? <laughs> I don't know. My dentist did it, so I, I'm going to question that. I got to go. My name is Eddie Wayne Jr. Enjoy the rest of the show. Here he goes, Eddie Wayne Jr. Give up for Eddie. You guys ready for more? You've been so great tonight.